uh, we'll start off with the introduction to ITGC. What exactly is I, what exactly is ITGC? Why is it important from an organization's perspective? You would see that sort of second and fourth point would go hand in hand. Why is it important and how one can implement effectively into their organization and sort of incorporate into their existing IT governance? What are the core components of ITGC? And probably will um, so let's start with the first one. Again, I don't really have any fancy PVDs, really, so we just might want to stick to whatever we discuss here more. So um, from practical practicality perspective, um, just so you know, just FYI, even if you have questions in between, and you know, you can probably raise your hand. This is hand function functionality in the in the go to meeting, so you can just raise your hand, and then we can we can sort of have have that interactive discussion too. So feel free to raise your hand if you if you want to interrupt me. Between. All right. So introduction to ITGC. So ITGC stands, you know, it, it goes by its name. So it stands for IT General Controls, right? So IT General Controls. So going by the name, going by the name, it is all about all the general controls in place, right? So you would see general controls like your access controls, right? Access controls, change management, change management, you would have your uh, business continuity and disaster recovery, you would have your incident response and whatnot, right? Now, general controls in general sense and in the industry standard as well, it means that any controls which are pretty predominantly used in any framework, any standards out there in the market would really be incorporated here as a as a bigger umbrella known as ID general controls, right? Now, it's it's really important for organizations to go through these set of basic controls, I would say, right? From a security hygiene perspective, from a security hygiene perspective. Now, it's really important for, for people to go through, for organizations to go through these controls to understand where do they stand currently in terms of their general security controls. And if they want to achieve, you know, uh, uh, greater compliance in terms of the, if they want to align themselves with NIST, if they align themselves, if they want to align themselves with ISO 27001 and n number of frameworks and standards out there in the market, they would want to start to look out from a security hygiene perspective if they do, if they haven't done it yet, right? Now, the second aspect is being compliant with some of the regulatory and legal requirements, right? I'm not sure how many of you have heard of SOX, so it stands for Sarbin Oxlade. Now, Sarbin Oxlade. Um, sort of um, um, sort of guides you that you would have to go through IT general controls to ensure that whatever you know your financial reporting and whatever anything related to finance side of things from a company is intact and it is it is sort of you know your 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 sort of aligned with the CIA triad which is your confidentiality integrity and availability availability right now I'm assuming that most of the audience here understand the basic terms of cyber security. Um, including your controls and CIA, and if you don't, that's fine. You can always go back after this session and sort of look up look up these terminologies, which is really important. And you know, as a GRC professional, you would see oftentimes using these terminologies in your um, in your day in your day to day life, right? So, so understanding that why is it important is first, you know, you're sort of complying with all your CIA pillars, which is confidentiality, integrity, availability from a legal and regulatory perspective to comply with SOCs and other things um, if, if you if you're exposed to uh, there could be other things as well right um, the other aspect is to mitigate the risk right now cyber security poses multiple number of risk, risks out there right the risk of you know risk of getting fished which is your phishing attack right the risk of ransomware attack um, DDoS attack right and it could, could be data leakage right data leakage as well right now there could be a number of cyber risks that you would have identified in your organization right and as a part of your uh, risk management framework you would have identified some controls in there um that would essentially you know map to your it general controls right and it will all make sense when we talk about the core components of itgc right now, the other aspect is uh, your business continuity. Again, it's a part of your core components of ITGC. Uh, the other part is your, uh, you know, business continuity, wherein, you know, your one of the risk would be making sure that your, that your, um, you know, your um, uh, system is available, your data is available for your, uh, for your customers, for your interested parties. Could really be anyone. Could for your vendors or and and a number of other people who's who's actually supporting your overall business objective, right? Now, those are sort of key 
importance important areas or i would say key important important aspects to keep in mind whenever we are implementing or whenever we are sort of looking looking um uh, looking for itgc in in, in uh, implementing itgc in the organizations right 